an instructional video from the Canine Health Foundation. How to care for a dog with degenerative myelopathy. Hello, I'm Krista Niebaum with Scouts House, a physical rehabilitation therapy center for animals located in California. I'm a physical therapist who works with veterinary professionals to help rehabilitate animals that are recovering from illness or injury, learning to live with a progressive disease, or simply dealing with the aging process. The topic of this video is the neurological disease, degenerative myelopathy, or DM. DM is a diagnosis of exclusion, which means that a dog can only be said to have DM when a veterinarian has ruled out all other possible causes for the symptoms seen. While researchers are continuing to investigate this disease, little is known about DM, including its cause. And at the time of this filming, there is no cure. Because of this lack of knowledge, many owners of dogs with DM have difficulty finding information about how to best care for their dogs. The purpose of this video is to provide you with such information, allowing you to take an active role in caring for your canine companion as he lives with this disease. So what is known about DM? Degenerative myelopathy is a complex, slowly progressive disease of the spinal cord. Age of onset is typically reported as being anywhere between 5 and 14 years of age. Males and females are affected equally. DM is most commonly seen in German Shepherds, but it can affect other breeds, especially large breed dogs, including Boxers, Bernese Mountain Dogs, Old English Sheepdogs, and Irish Setters. Smaller breeds, such as Corgis, can also be given the diagnosis. Regardless of your dog's breed or the symptoms you're seeing, it's vital that your dog be examined by your veterinarian to obtain a correct diagnosis. Dr. Karen Blount is a veterinarian that sees many dogs with degenerative myelopathy. Thanks for talking with us today, Dr. Blount. You're welcome. So Dr. Blount, I understand that DM is a diagnosis of exclusion, which means that other diagnoses or injuries have to be ruled out before a dog can be said to have DM. That's true, Krista. There are several other diseases that an animal may have before we can rule in or out degenerative myelopathy, which include intervertebral disc disease, arthritis, lumbosacral disease, possibly even tumors. I see. So what types of tests or measures might a veterinarian need to do if she suspects a dog has DM? The first thing we need to do is a complete physical exam looking specifically at the orthopedic and neurologic systems. Um, diagnostics would include blood work, x-rays, potentially ultrasounds, um, myelography, CSF taps, and even CAT scans or MRIs depending on what we are or are not finding. And what kinds of treatment would you recommend for a dog with degenerative myelopathy? Depending on whether or not we think pain is present, we may use pain medication, anti-inflammatories, we may consider alternative medicine like acupuncture, and most definitely physical therapy. I've seen many patients benefit significantly with just physical therapy and rehabilitation. So let's take a closer look at this disease. When a dog is affected by degenerative myelopathy, the spinal cord slowly degenerates. The myelin, or the insulation of nerves, which is required for them to work properly, and the nerves themselves, called axons, are slowly destroyed. Since the nerves are what carry the signal from the brain to the muscles, this degeneration affects the dog's ability to voluntarily contract his muscles, resulting in the observed weakness beginning in the hind limbs. The first sign typically seen is that the dog is less stable in his hind legs. He may have greater difficulty rising from sitting into standing. He may seem less coordinated. And his back toenails may become worn down from his hind feet dragging when walking. Often the first thing that owners notice is hearing their dog's toenails scraping on the cement when out on a walk. As the disease progresses, the dog becomes weaker and he loses awareness of where his hind limbs are. He may knuckle over on his back feet and his coordination will worsen. His back legs may even cross while walking, getting tangled up. Finally, in later stages, the weakness worsens to the point that the dog is unable to walk using his hind limbs or even rise up to standing without assistance. This stage typically occurs three to six months following initial diagnosis. Fecal and urinary incontinence may occur, and then the front limbs get weak as well. 
following this, respiratory failure often occurs. However, most dogs are euthanized for quality of life reasons before this stage of disability is reached. The goals of treatment for DM are to maximize the dog's function and quality of life during each stage of the disease, and hopefully slowing the progression if possible. This may be one of the reasons why your veterinarian may recommend that your dog be seen for physical rehabilitation therapy. But before we discuss how rehab might be able to help, let's discuss some things that you can do in your own home to help keep your dog safe and more comfortable. For a dog with DM, the home can be a challenging environment. However, there are many things you can do to increase your dog's safety and comfort. If he has difficulty maintaining his balance when walking and your floors are hardwood, linoleum, or tile, put down area rugs in the places where he normally walks. Rugs with a rubber backing are best for this use, but you can use other rugs. Just make sure you tack them down with double-sided carpet tape or rubber mesh to hold them in place. Another option for dealing with slippery surfaces is to teach your dog to wear booties. Be sure to get booties that will stay in place on your dog's feet and that have rubbery soles for gripping. Some booties are made to protect a dog's feet during sporting activities, not for improving traction. Also, because of decreased coordination, your dog may have trouble negotiating changes in elevation, such as stairs, furniture, or uneven surfaces in the yard. Use a baby gate or an X-Pen to block off your dog's access to these places or only allow her into these areas when someone is there to supervise her. And to get your dog in and out of the car safely, you can train your dog to use a ramp or a small set of steps. Always stay close by and keep a hand on your dog when she's walking up or down and consider having her wear a sturdy harness in situations like this because it creates a handle on your dog for you to hold and it's much safer than holding her by the collar. Likewise, you can use a ramp or a small set of steps to get your dog on and off the bed or a couch. In addition to the front harnesses just shown, rear harnesses and slings can be helpful in assisting weaker dogs up into a standing position or in giving extra support when walking. Of course, it's still important that your dog get good nutrition and adequate water. Sometimes for dogs with balance issues, it's hard to reach down to the floor to get their food and water. If that's the case with your dog, provide her with a raised feeder and water dish. And for dogs who can no longer stand for extended periods of time to eat, place the food and water bowls on rubber mesh pads on the floor. And remember, every extra pound of body weight makes it even more difficult for your dog to move, so be sure to keep her at her ideal body weight. When your dog has DM, you need to be careful about the types of bedding you use. Be sure to give him a soft, well-cushioned surface to lie on but avoid dog beds with high edges as this may trip up a dog who's weak in the back legs. In later stages of DM, good nursing care is key. If your dog is unable to get himself up or change positions every four to six hours or so, you must help him to do so to help prevent pressure sores. If your dog can't hold a position because of trunk weakness, you can use bolsters or rolled up blankets to help support him. As mentioned previously, it may also become necessary to assist your dog with her toileting needs. This may mean as little as providing some support with your hands or a harness so she can keep her balance while squatting, or if incontinence develops, you may need to ask your veterinarian to teach you how to help express her bladder. And be sure to keep her skin clean and dry if accidents occur. Products that can be helpful in this instance are absorptive training pads, disposable dog diapers, moisture repellent ointments, and waterless shampoos. Come on. Good boy. Regardless of the stage of the disease, it's still important that you and your dog have fun together. So while you might not be able to throw the ball for him to chase, you can try throwing lob tosses directly to him or rolling the ball to him on the ground. Or if he's no longer able to go for longer walks unassisted, you can try using one of those rear harnesses or a cart. Typically with DM, the dog's cognition is not affected, so it's important to keep him mentally engaged and happy. Finally, there may be exercises you can do in the home to help maximize your dog's function. Your veterinarian or your physical rehab center can teach you exercises that you can do that are appropriate for your dog. Cairo, go get it! 
As mentioned, there currently is no cure for DM, but there are ways to help maximize your dog's strength and possibly slow the progression of the disease. A study recently published in the Journal of Veterinary Internal Medicine by Katman et al. demonstrated that physical rehabilitation therapy helps to maintain the functional abilities of dogs with DM for a longer period of time and therefore allows them to live longer than dogs with DM who didn't follow a controlled exercise program. Certainly, keeping your dog as strong and fit as possible can only help. It's important, however, that the exercise program be designed specifically for your dog's needs. Especially when working with dogs with neurological deficits, it can be easy to inadvertently cause injury. Be sure to talk to your veterinarian about what types of exercises are safe for your dog, or have your veterinarian refer you to a physical rehabilitation therapy center. There are a number of treatment techniques and modalities that may be used if your dog is seen for rehabilitation therapy, depending on her functional status. Passive exercises such as range of motion, massage, or electrical stimulation may be used and might be included in a home exercise program for you to follow outside of the clinic. Aquatic therapy such as underwater treadmill walking or facilitated swimming can be especially helpful in maintaining the muscles used during walking. At Scout's House, we found that walking in an underwater treadmill can provide greater benefit to dogs with weakness in the rear legs as compared to swimming, as most dogs swim using only their front legs. And walking in an underwater treadmill can be safer than walking on dry land, as the water provides support, making falls less likely, and the exercise is less jarring to the dog's joints. However, as access to an underwater treadmill isn't always possible, your veterinarian may be able to suggest other similar activities, which may be appropriate for your dog. Various land-based exercises may also be performed, again, depending on your dog's level of function and needs. Exercises will often focus on maintaining or improving strength, balance, body awareness, and coordination. Finally, a consultation with a skilled therapist at a physical rehabilitation therapy facility will be able to adjust your dog's treatment program and help you adjust your home life as your dog's needs change. It can be frightening to receive a diagnosis like degenerative myelopathy, but as we hope we've conveyed in this video, it doesn't necessarily mean that you and your dog can't still enjoy your time together. As is true with any disease, you'll likely need to make some changes and adjustments to deal with the challenges of DM, but with your help, your dog can still have a very meaningful life. And if his quality of life does become an issue, if the time comes to let your dog go, it will still be a very difficult decision. But you can make that decision without feeling any guilt, knowing that you helped your dog live his best possible life, despite his DM. This video was made possible by a grant from the Canine Health Foundation. Additional sponsorship was provided by Scouts House, a physical rehabilitation center for animals, and the American Kennel Club. We're more than champion dogs, we're the dog's champion. And Purina, your pet, our passion.